All right, what is up, guys? My name is. Uh, welcome to another episode of the Dad's Life Podcast. Um, my, I'm one of your hosts, Sean Flack 2.0, in the house. Um, obviously, we got. Uh, I'm gonna introduce Nyord first because he's uh, he's with us via satellite. Satellite, uh, Nyord. Uh, oh yeah, you're that way. Say what's up. What's up? <laughs> and of course, Cat and Courtney to me as always. Um, up here in the corner, we got Mr. Crenley. Mr. Crenley, thank you for joining us again. What up, party people? <laughs> What up, party people? Sensei John. Oh man, he over there rapping with you know his own personal right there. I love it, Sensei you know John. I mean, I'm just making it do what it do, John. You know how we do it, dog. Hey, I'm glad y'all joined in today. We're in for a good treat, and uh, thank you to the patrons out there uh, for tuning in to, uh, for the podcast we just did our little session we just had earlier. Uh, y'all gonna love that. But all y'all that didn't go get the Patreon. Go get that joint so you can get the whole story. Right. Oh, that's my speed. <laughs> okay. And again, my name is Sean Flag 2.0. Thank you for joining. Um, and just kind of going off what Sensei John said, if you're looking, we did our behind the scenes before the show episode for episode number seven, title pending. Um, you could head over to shadowpackwest.com and there's a link there to join up on our Patreon, uh, Patreon page there. Uh, you can start your patronage as little as a dollar a month and you'll get access to our pre-show episodes um, that every time we record, we're going to put something out there for you guys um, as a thank you. Uh, again, we create for creation's sake. Um, we don't get paid for it, but we love hanging out with each other. So that's one thing. Um, okay, so just kind of recapping last episode, we actually had two epi- uh two uh topics to do last week and we only got to one and it was actually wow it was uh, a really <laughs> uh, an exclusive interview episode uh reintroducing uh, or introducing uh mr crinley and Nyord. and Nyord really went deep um about uh a lot of stuff go ahead and check that out um, unfortunately we weren't able to get to our second topic so in today's episode we are going to go over our second topic um but i will say um some feedback that i got from you nord a lot of people that or let me just say the folks that i talked to about the episode thought your story was very compelling and very interesting and i was really impressed um you know again just a great episode guys um have them put it in the comments <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> go ahead and make sure you like subscribe share um and again you know give us some feedback um so okay so we, we got our topic um uh currently and you know, what are we talking about today today we're going to talk, talk about what would you do if you didn't have to work for a living okay and of course before we start there what do we have to do before we start there before we do that I want to go ahead and say happy birthday to New York guy. It was a few days ago. Uh, but... Oh, yeah. Let me. Oh, you know, I just. Oh, so, dear. So down in the comments. Tell him happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Got, got them horns in there for you, New York. All right. And on the next thing, what is in your cup? Okay. Uh, first, boy can go first. What is in your cup? Okay, what do you guys got? Okay, who's going first? What is in your cup? Go on, birthday boy. Um, I pulled a Sean Flack this, month, this, this week because uh, I, I haven't been able to go to the store yet. So, <laughs> I've got crystal light. Hey, 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 somebody got to do it. I ain't never seen Crystal Light in that. No, they don't. What was that? No, they don't. Oh, it's a uh, pot of squeeze. Oh, oh. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah, we love those in this household. All right, uh, Crinley. Here in my cup, I have Knob Creek. Knob Creek. Oof. That sounds fancy. Yeah, boy. It's not the ride this time, though. That's usually what I get. Okay, I like right. that sound. The clinkly clink. Yeah, man. All right, well, since I'm I'm, what are we gonna do? Are we gonna uh, reveal what's in your cup? Or are we just gonna kind of let it roll after five episodes? Let it roll, let it roll, let it roll, like the quarterback say, man. Let's do it. We'll do it at ten. He's got something in his cup. Right. Go ahead and show us your cup. Y'all see that? 
Yeah, I got a new camera too, so you know, check me out. Maybe you can see. I'm gonna be honest. Better. It's been so long since we said what's in his cup. I forgot what's in his cup. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I want to get some. I want to try it because okay. it sounds good. Yeah. Okay. All right. You right. gotta go back to episode uh, two, one two. And two, one and two, one and two, and three, and three. Okay. And uh, you can find out what's in my cup. So when you go back to those episodes, leave a comment. And also subscribe to the channel when you after you leave that comment, and tell me what's in my cup. And what do they get, Sean? Oh, they get the shout out. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna give them the horns like this right here. We're gonna give them a little, a little, a little victory from Final Fantasy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A little, little victory thing. Um, oh, go with your traffic, uh, Yard. We, I, so I, I'm, I'm kind of backtracking us, what, two weeks now? But, you know, we kind of dubbed ourselves, right, the final four, mm -hmm. right? Yes. It, the problem is, is every time that we've done, that you guys did, like, the dynamic duo, the holy trinity, the final four just doesn't sound right. We are the fantastic four, y'all. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with the victory on that one. I like that one, the fantastic okay. four. I like that. I like that a lot. I do too. Okay. So right on, you um what's in my cup? Okay, so first of all, oh. it's not a cup, it's a can. And you guys don't get to choose, but only only Sensei John will probably appreciate this. I'm gonna crack this can real quick. It's a four loco. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Light. Oh man. <laughs> really? A Bud Light. I know. That. I don't know. Okay, let me. Let me. This is my first time having it, so I don't know. I don't know exactly how it tastes, but let me. Let me. All right, can you give it a... Yeah, I don't know the can. Damn, that's pretty damn good. But you do know the artist. Hey! Hey, throw them teas up one time. <laughs> throw the teas up one time. <laughs> hey! So this is the Mac Dre Gold. Um, if you guys don't know, this is um, by the Ultima Beer Works. Um, so Mac Drizzle Golden Ale. It is an ale. I'll give you a little description of it on the back. Again, we're not sponsored, but I figured Sensei John would appreciate the gold well, you ale. Know that. You know what it is, because I'm from the V, boy. <laughs> uh, and maybe maybe some behind-the-scenes stuff uh, Sensei John will tell you about Mac Dre for all you non-Mac Drizzle um, uh, fans out there. Uh, okay, so this fizz ale is what uh, what it, it is what it is. It's a hot forward golden ale with notes of melon, gooseberry, passion fruit, and lychee. Everywhere you drink it, it's a party, y'all. Go stupid. Go oh, stupid. Hey. <laughs> so I'm a little dip in my head. Right. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. All right. And now it's time. What's on your plate? Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I just had one, a big ass plate. Okay. All right. It's so, like a piece of <laughs> so, what do you got right there? Beef. Mm. I've got none other than Bucky's maple, cherry maple beef jerky. Mmm. And if you don't know, now you know. And, oh, yeah. and and some of us don't know, so maybe some behind the scenes, uh, you could talk about Bucky's or as uh, Mr. Crimley says, the cult of um, the cult of. <laughs> okay, all right. So let's get started. So what's our question again, Crimley? Our question is, what would you do if you didn't have to work for a living? All right. So what would you guys do if you want to work for a living? You guys had a little time to think about it, maybe play some Jeopardy music. Who would like to go first? But hold on, there's rules. There's rules to the answers, all right? There's rules, okay. Oh, yeah. Put, put them out there, New York. No, <laughs> they're not my rules. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay, right, okay. Okay, I'll put them out. So the rules were, if you, if you didn't have to work for a living, uh, like you had unlimited resources, you can't just say, oh, I'm going to just buy things and travel the world. You can't say that. You got to say something like would that would you what would you do to improve yourself um, for self-improvement or what you would do to improve your community? So those are the rules. Um, now that you guys know the rules, who would like to go first? I'll go first and I'll get in trouble for it. So do you want me to go first then? 
no, no, he's 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 gonna gonna I, I, I might as well struggle for it. Okay, all right. Your guy, take it away. The floor is yours. I would move out to the middle of freaking nowhere with my family and homestead. Why would you get in trouble for that? Because I'm not improving my community. But you're improving yourself. Actually, actually, technically I am because I'm removing myself from the community. So <laughs> You're making your own community. <laughs> no, I like, um, I've kind of always loved the idea of like, get away from everything, kind of, kind of sort of unplug. I mean, obviously you can't really do that when you, you can't unplug when you make content, right? So like, I don't want to completely unplug, but I, I, I would love, definitely love to go just live off the land. You know what I mean? And and beyond that, like, I, I'm going to be honest, I think the Amish have it right for, <laughs> for a portion of it, you know? I, I'd love to be able to ha- create, like, a village of, of sorts that, you know, everyone's kind of got a thing that they help pitch in, you know, go back to the whole barter system of things and just literally live off the land. I think that would be awesome. I actually think that's not a bad idea. I don't know why you'd get in trouble for that. Uh, yeah, I wasn't improving my community, so. <laughs> well, I, or it was self improvement, because, I mean, you know, you know, homesteading is not something easy. And homesteading, like, what I understand about it, I mean, it's a way of life. Like, you can't really. I mean, I think our capitalistic world has us, um, like, you need a car, a big house, a boat. Like, those aren't the things you need. No, you need shelter, you need food, you need clean water, you need clean air. That's what you need. And it kind of takes right. us out of that, um, you know. But I'm talking moment. like in the mountains of Wyoming, or you know, like hey, give me a set of mountains to go live in, and I'd be happy. Okay, no, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, but I think the original way he worded the 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 rules was like no vacation, no just like going on a trip somewhere. But it's not. I mean, I really it, it, it ain't right. a vacation when you bring your family with you. <laughs> it's, like, it's, like, it's the kids it's the kids sorry you know what i, I you know what I, think? I think njord said something or uh sensei said something that's gonna get him in trouble versus what you said hey hey, <laughs> right. hey no way I, I, my bad it's when you bring the kids it's just a trip when it's just you and your wife it's, just a, it's a vacation Okay, okay, good clean up there. I don't know how cleaner it is. Hey, but... hey, hey isn't she going through watching? Isn't your wife going through watching and helping edit stuff uh, for uh, the marketing purposes? You definitely getting in trouble. <laughs> hey, like Mac Gray say, it is what it is. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, Crinley, what do you got? Something that I've actually thought quite a bit about was um i'd like to get the equipment to for like for people with disabilities to be able to play games like those adaptive controllers and stuff for xbox Mm -hmm. and they make them for other systems now too but i'd like to get like a collection of them and go to schools where like and just spend a whole day with them like letting them play games and helping them play games and because some of them most of them probably don't even know the possibilities of them playing games like with with everybody else but that's what i would like to do okay you know yeah that's cool um sensei what you got um so ah man i had time to think about this but you know it's a lot of things that run through my mind one thing off the show, I would love to build like a skating ring because when I grew up, I skated. And ours got what kind of skating? Us. Roller skating. Like quads or inline? Come on now. There's only one roller skating. You can't, right. you can't, you can't. It's not inline. It's called rollerblading. Well, that, well. So ro- what he means is like the quads you have two and two. The inlines you are roller yeah, blades. Roller skating. That's roller skating. <laughs> the quads. Oh, so you fruit booted it quad yeah. hard. Excuse me. Quad. <laughs> you, you you fruit booted it. Got it. Got it. Oh jeez. Fruit booted it. Hold on. Pause. What's the fruit for? <laughs> uh, remember, I'm a hockey player. Oh god. Oh no. Okay. Well, I'm not uh, ice skating. Oh no! I I played roller hockey too. Oh okay, so roller 
Oh, well, you can do both. You can blade or, or whatever. Okay, so quads. Quad skating. I would love to bring... I mean, you could bring your rollerblades on the same thing, but, you know, yeah. what I would do is had you know, uh, set up uh, with the kids. They come in, the families and stuff like that. Definitely have security because when I was growing up, one that I had uh, growing up, you got... People were shooting. Oh, That's why I got shut down. Oh man, good old town. Mine, mine was uh, mine was drugs and fights. No, no, no firearms, but drugs and fights. Man, I love that place. Hey, I even took. I got a good story. I took. I never took my dad, but I took my mom. Right, and I ain't know nothing about her roller skating or you know quad skating. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Quad skating. <laughs> no, it's still it's still called roller skating, dude. I just asked you if you okay. did quads or inlines. Okay, okay, okay. My bad, my bad. I just want to make sure I'm politically correct. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh god. I'm just fucking, I'm just fucking with you, Nora. I know. I'm just fucking with you. Uh, uh, so, but uh, so I took her, and I drove and everything. I was a maid, whatever, and. uh I took her up there and we went, uh, I grabbed my skates, she grabbed hers, you know, and we got down on the floor. Now me, I'm, ooh, can't turn around and all this shit and, you know, I can get down, you know, get down on it, get down there, get down on it, you know, they play that, hey, get down on it, hey. He definitely oh, brought the seventies back. Yes, he did. Right. So, so I'm rolling, right? And I'm looking at my, I'm looking for my mom, you know. You get out there, get down on it. She started turning around and shit. She started dancing. I'm like, shit, I didn't know you could skate. <laughs> Your like, mom straight up looked at you. Your mom straight up looked at you and said, get good, scrub. <laughs> <laughs> I was out there like a novice compared to what she was doing. So that's my quick story. But I love that. I love that story. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, definitely. That's one of the things I wanted to uh, bring back to the community. It's just some old school shit that I love doing. And I think kids would get a joy out of it. Definitely have security because we got to have watch. Maybe even a fence around it. I don't know. Oh, my God. Um, uh, Make but, it uh, crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, Dude, actually, uh, that would be kind of cool. If, if you think about it. Right? Sorry, Sean. I know we're getting into yours next. But, like, I just had, like, that business thought process idea, right? A skating rink themed like a prison. And, like, see, like the theme, right? Okay. Like, full-on, like, jailbird suits. I, I don't like, know. I, that doesn't, that doesn't, I don't. Okay, go, go with your, go with your tribe. Oh. Hey, right, so, but you make it 18 Wait. plus. Okay, I mean, you gotta have a, I don't know about that one, no. though. Can get... You can call it Juvie. Oh, geez. 21 plus. Sorry. Oh, my God. Okay. It's my turn. It's my turn. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> We're going down the rabbit hole now. Right. Okay. Oh, okay. Besides that, though, um, oh, I'm very into fitness and, um, I don't know, maybe like a gym or something, you know, for uh, athletes, young athletes and kids and children. Just, But I built one like, you know, where... It 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 is serve as a, a place of um, you know I guess what do you want to say serenity or whatever because I like I would have like spa if I had all the money in the world if I had now I didn't have to worry about nothing Nathan uh, 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 it'd have a spa it'd have a place for the parents to go and then uh, like gymnastic this would be a full complex it wouldn't cost you much because I would love to just uh, front that for my community because money if i got money to blow like that and and what i would do for my that means i got money coming in and it ain't gonna stop okay <laughs> so uh definitely i put some place to where uh underprivileged kids athletes parents where parents can come and chill out relax go to the sauna go to the you know maybe even get a massage you know uh I have a whole like complex. Women can get their feet done. You know what I mean? You want a little Ass can have a spot, gym. huh? Yeah, I, I want everything. You know, just for the families, though. Okay. All right. 
Uh, okay. John, what you got? What would I do? Um, you know what? I would kind of be on somewhat of the same wavelength as Sensei there. Um, specifically, though, um, I want to teach. So if I was to talk about self-improvement, I'd want to teach. Uh, that would be the main thing. I'd want to teach. Let it be whatever it is. Like what we do here, um, you know, with what we started with Shadow Pack Gaming and what we're doing here with Shadow Pack West is I'd like to gra grab folks and, and teach things that I feel I'm good enough to teach. Um, so that'd be something like, um, you know, this, what, you know, we're podcasting or, you know, producing content, um, you know, public speaking. Um, and I feel like I'm, you know, really good at that. Um, but as far as like, if money wasn't an object, I would kind of do the same thing. I would open up a community center and it would be like a community center for the arts. And it would be, um, with a twist because I feel like there's a lot of different art that kind of goes misunderstood like martial arts um archery you know um you know um i would also you know indoor like when i grew up when i when we lived in reno i lived out there our rotc shot bb guns and 22s at the school so i think you had to be like a uh no no new york no <laughs> Um, you had to be, I think it was like if you were a lower classman, you were, you were able to shoot BB guns. And when you got to upperclassmen, you were able to shoot 22s. And they had an indoor range. Um, but like stuff like that, um, you know. So the main thing would be a gym. It would be like a gym where the families could come in and kind of do their thing. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we teach cooking because cooking is art. Or we'd have, I would want people to volunteer their time or potentially put people on staff if money wasn't an object and teach the community kids. Mainly, I, I wanted to start it off as a youth center, but then I wanted to encompass the whole family, the whole family. So, you know, the parents could come in and they could take a class or they could teach a class or, you know, a safe space for people to come in and learn how to do this. You know, have a whole computer lab set up that would teach them how to produce content or again, if they wanted, you know, somebody wanted to teach piano or somebody wanted to teach dance or martial arts or again, stuff, archery, um, you know, kind of going into archery. And I know, you know, that's something you're like doing is like hunting, you know, understanding like homesteading, stuff like that. Um, you know, uh, on one of the episodes, he did talk about that and harvesting an animal. Um, but living, you know, like really bring some of the things that aren't taught in schools or supplement things. I know when I was in school, we had band. Like I would play the saxophone in the fifth grade. And I want to say soon after they you, they didn't do any instruments and you did choir. And then when I got into high school, uh, they I had I had band. OK, uh, well, you know, I'm uh, again, I'm, I'm a few years. I'm quite a few years younger than you. Than yeah, that. but I get so, go ahead. I, I played too. the trumpet in middle school. Yeah. Um, but yeah. OK. Yeah. And, and, and like, you know, um, again, like when I went through, I just knew that they start taking those types of things because it wasn't in the budget. And I feel like those are those things that right. really build character, just like, you know, athletes, you know, sports, stuff like that. So that's what I would do, um, you know, and, and I would, you know, again, I, and we had talked about this in New York, I want to say years ago, um, you know, have a place for them to come hang out and and learn how to stream and game and turn like really understand the back end of this stuff and be able and the parents be involved as well. So the parents don't think that, hey, oh, my kids just gaming for 12 hours a day. So, you know, there's a whole back end of this that has that has nothing to do with the actual stream, you know, getting set up right. properly and things like that and, and getting the right device. networking. Yeah. You know, and it's funny because I'm going to be taking a, a power networking class next month. Um, so, you know, like I said, so it's like I said, I, that, that's what I would do if, if I didn't have to work for a living and I could choose what I wanted to do to improve myself and improve my community. That's what I think I'd bring to the table is I would want to be a trainer. I'd want to teach in some way, shape or form. And then I want to create a space where things could be taught um, and, and a multitude of things. So that's what I, got. I, I you brought up a, a thought for me like about things that aren't taught in schools anymore, right? Um, what happened to the old school home ec class? And, and, and I'm not talking like cooking. I'm talking like how to do your taxes, right? How to fill out job applications, how to create a job resume, how to do all that stuff that you need to do when once you become an adult. Because I don't know about y'all, but that was gone from high school when I, when I was in it. Like completely gone. You know, I went to uh, school in East Oakland and um, they had stoves in the class, 
but they didn't teach home ec anymore. And this is back in like right. 99 or, you know, I graduated in 99. So this is like maybe 95 or something like that. Um, yeah. I mean, and those are the, some of the simple things. When I went to, when I moved to Reno, I actually took a home ec class out there where we actually like got taught. We, our first test for this class was to wash your hands. And so what the teacher did, <laughs> how to properly wash your hands. Yeah. So what the teacher did is she took a, uh, she had to ask if anybody was allergic to bees. And if you didn't have a bee allergy, she'd spray this bees wax stuff on your hands. And then um, she didn't tell you what you were doing. She was like, okay, I'm praying this off stuff on your hands. Now go, everybody go wash their hands. So then everybody, they put out just enough soap, right? So they had soaps and cups and you had to like kind of dig into the cup. We're getting a little feedback from Sensei John there. Um, you stabilizing that? Oh. Oh. He's having some technical difficulties. Yeah. And it's causing some feedback on my end. Let me write this time down real quick. Um, but kind of going back to the story is they um, sprayed your hands. They took everybody went and, you know, took the soap or whatever, washed their hands and sat back down, dried their hands, sat back down. And then she goes, well, first of all, I could tell half of you failed. Right. <laughs> and we're like, why? And she was like, well, we I just put out just enough soap for you guys to properly wash your hands. And there's more than half the soap left. Right. So it was just like, oh, man. And then she turns the lights off or dims the lights and has a black light. Ooh. And is going through people's hands and like, right. yeah, no, you guys need that. Was, you know, it's, it's a it's a, a lesson in sanitation. Right. You know, so obviously so everybody's like, ah dang and of course people are being embarrassed right they're like ah um but yeah i, I took home ec and, and actually my final for that semester was to make um thousand island dressing salad dressing mm. ah. yeah yeah so that's my little thing there but you're right it's yeah we had home, we had, we had home ec uh when i went to high school too i, I never we did we did okay um but yeah that, so Let's circle around. And um, anybody got any thoughts on what Njord said? He said he wanted to homestead, kind of, you know, kind of start his own thing and, and you know, become the mountain man that he is. Um, <laughs> uh, anybody like have any? That. Okay. I do like that. That's, that's you know, um, oh, definitely you ain't going to have at your own chickens, you know, uh, uh, hens, roosters, whatever. Uh, you definitely got... Uh, potatoes that you're growing gotta keep them carbs up uh, <laughs> what, else, what else would you be growing a tomato uh, I like to hear everything so it would kind of be like the whole the whole shebang right you gotta have veggies you gotta have protein you gotta have um cattle you, I mean, you don't have to have dairy and all that but you have to find yourself a clean water source first and foremost cause that's that's probably that and shelter is the most important thing you know, water source and you be out that. there building your you gonna build your own house? Now nah, you got in I would definitely try. I, ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I would definitely try. I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm gonna go get that double wide, that double wide two hundred thousand dollar joint and just drop it on the land and be done with it. Yeah, hey, you yeah. said money wasn't an object object, dude. I'm getting like that five hundred thousand dollar like quadruple wide. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know that, that again I yeah. Hey. And you're using all the trees you cut down uh, for firewood. Oh, dude, I do that on the average every May, anyways. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So good. Homestead. That's what's up, Crinley. Uh, so, what did Crinley say? Crinley, you said you wanted to start basically like a little uh, a little center for the disabled to come out and, and play video games. Uh, anybody got some uh, f uh, thoughts on that one? No, nah, he said mobile. Yeah, tell me how to mobile. Say that one more time. Yeah, I was talking about going to the schools. Yeah, I was saying oh. use mobile. Yeah. Oh, okay. But, well, how would you see that playing out? Well, I mean, just like you know, communicate with the school. <laughs> Careful now. <laughs> that crystal light hit yeah. hard. Yeah, 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 too hard. That crystal light hit. Oh. Yeah, that crystal light hit hard. That, 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 that crystal wasn't as light as he thought it was. <laughs> Right, that crazy. But uh, <laughs> man, you good? <laughs> hey, 
it went down the wrong pipe. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> Hey, well, uh, you remember you used to say that? Yeah, right. Hey, but it's, it, it go it go all down one way. <laughs> Paul, uh, all right. Okay, well, but so you know, so the way it works is like, or the way I would do it would be like I would have all the equipment. I would communicate with the school and plan a day that I could go because normally, you know, the people with disabilities are all together anyway. For the most part so just pick a classroom where i could set up and then they could each come in have a set amount of time play games and i could have several different games so they have stuff to choose from okay are we talking about video games or yeah like xbox okay but how how okay if they're disabled how would they be able to control it or understand how to control it that's what we so they have adaptive controllers that come with different it's like so it's this box however wide it is and it's got different uh-huh. ports for each button on the controller and you got different attachments that you plug in for those different buttons well, here's a, here's a little caveat. See, Sensei John's on that PS stuff. He's on that PS5 stuff. So a lot of those peripherals uh, are actually made for Xbox and PC. Like Microsoft actually makes them have a full lab yeah. in their in their home. Uh, Switch has one now too. Do that, okay? Oh, you yeah. hate, man. Okay. <laughs> I'm not hating. I'm not hate. I'm just, I, you know what I'm saying. You probably don't know because you know Sony not doing that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. So okay. Sony's okay. a PlayStation gamer. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure they're not far behind. Come on, come on Poker New York. What you say? <laughs> I said you're a dirty PlayStation gamer. <laughs> you dirty bastard. Uh, I'll say it. People in the back. Unfortunately, <laughs> PlayStation started to put games out on PC now, so it's okay. And uh, I, I want to get. A, I want. I, I want to get a PS5. Yeah, I mean to play that game. Like that game looks so much fun. You kind of like switching it up here. That's on PC. But it, oh, well, I, I don't have a high end PC like you do. My PC, what? my PC streams. It doesn't game. I mean, you can change that. Calm down. I don't got funds like that. <laughs> you know, I'm a dad with three kids. So you know, two, yeah, there were two I living. I mean, members. I feel like if you can stream though, you can game because my computer would game or yeah would game better than it would stream. <clears throat> Okay. Well, you know, all right. Well, so anyway, a little, little background with that. We're going to put some content out about that, really. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Sensei John, he said, um, you know, uh, he wanted to do the skating rink and he wanted to do somewhat like of a gym thing. What do you got? Yeah, so, so, yeah. And, and, and I'm glad you put that out there, Sean. So we're going to do like how you said, like a community center, but it's gonna have different rooms and different places it's gonna be huge right you know what i mean i'm talking about big um acres of shit oh so you're talking about having a compound you're not talking about having a facility right complex right oh compound uh okay come in and sit down oh yeah what happened oh no i was you know what i gotta have a sign if i do that like you know what i'm saying that means Go back you guys, gotcha. yeah you guys froze um but i got oh, you okay it's gonna be a gonna be a compound i feel like i'm moving slow on my game i don't know am, you, am you, i doing the uh am i doing the old chinese movie or the kung fu movie <laughs> you know what you want to know what what's what's keying me to you not being right is your shoe pauses <laughs> your shoe will pause for like a second and then it'll keep going then it'll pause and it'll keep going but uh, no. I don't know what's up with my. Uh, it's shoes. okay, you know. Like you said, you got to lock in. You know what I'm saying? You got to lock. Once you my go internet to... pig isn't isn't running. R- right. Huh? You didn't feed the internet pig. Man, I fed that motherfucker, <laughs> man. <laughs> um, and you know, lastly, I came like, on too late. You gotta get to running. Right. And I guess, you know, I mean, I mean, for my thing, I just um, it's something I actually always wanted to do. And I had talked about it multiple times to different people and they were said, well, why don't you just go get financing for it? And, um, you know, why? because you can get something like that started and, you know, you can network with the schools and, you know, again, supplement some of the things that they're losing out of the curriculum for what's actually in public school. 
Um, it's it's a big undertaking. And when we do things like that, it's a lot of thankless job. It's like a thankless job besides what I would pull from that. And it, the way I'd want to do it is I would, it would be free to the community. So I'd have to front the whole cost, you know, um, you know, do a nonprofit and get donations and things like that and potentially do grants. And, you know, my sister did that or, you know, she still does that. Um, and then my wife, you know, Mel, she worked at the YMCA um, as a senior site director. So she did a lot of fundraising. It's a lot of work. Um, and, and a lot of times, a lot of long nights and stuff like that. And, um, you know, long days, long nights. And I don't think I'd have the energy for it if I had to work. Um, I think I have a, the passion for it to pursue it if I did not have to work. So that's for me where I came up with the question. Um, so that for me, that's how I came up with the questions. I think I would have the passion for it if I did not have to uh, if I didn't have to work. So. I, the the one thing that I could see that would be a hindrance to what you got going on I, um, for what you're looking for, for the passion and all that is finding the personnel that are right for it. Oh, big time. I mean, that's, that's, that's very difficult. I mean, just looking at daycare workers, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> like, these people loved kids when they started. Oh, yeah. I, my wife is prime, prime. She's. Uh, yeah, she when we started, um, you know, I work a job and, and I got a promotion because I wanted her to stay home. And her thing was, OK, well, once we kind of get everything rolling, you know, she'll start a daycare, you know. So, you know, she could watch her kids and then, you know, watch I mean, our kids and then take on some other folks, kids, make extra side money. After she left that job, she was in that she was in early childhood development for almost 20 years. And she when she left, she was like, no. No, I'm not. I'm, you know, you think it's easy, but the when you do that, you have more bosses. Like every parent yep. is your boss. So if you take on three, four kids, you have four or five, you know, three, four bosses. So she was like, no. And I, and I get that. Like I said, I, it, again, youth center, um, you know, I'm not trying to change diapers or nothing like that. I want to enrich the community and, and, and keep some of the shenanigans that's going on. Like you said, you know, since John, you said at the, the, the rolling rink, they over there shooting. No, I, I've always felt that if young people have something to do that they find worth in, that they won't do those things. And so, you know, that's that's where, like, my thing kind of came from. So, you know, I want to say thank you guys for sharing what you guys would do. Um, you are, I don't think you'd be in trouble. <laughs> You're not in trouble for wanting to say you want the homestead. You know, currently, I was definitely the only one out of the whole group that was like, yeah, forget the community. I'm going off by myself. <laughs> I, yeah, that's why I, I got one question. Home improvement. Go ahead. I Sounds got like... one question for you, Lord. Will you tell us where you are? Oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> You'll still be doing this. Hey, hey I've got to teach that city boy. <laughs> i got to teach that city boy how to, how to harvest an animal. That would be entertaining. Yeah. Oh man, I I oh I, I don't know. I'm squeamish. I can't oh, do it. To hear. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I'm squ I'm squeamish. I gotta, I, gotta, I gotta teach that city boy how to how to harvest an animal. Mm -hmm. You know, have it all up to here, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I I can do it. Yeah, I'm good. I'll watch. I'll I'll hold the camera. How about that? Hey, you're it. <laughs> I'll be right with you, dog. <laughs> no. Come on out, dude. I'll I'll take you anytime. Oh man, I'm with it. during season. I'm with it. During season, right. um, we can make we, and we can make some deer jerky. <laughs> um, and then you know what Crenley said uh, about the whole um, inclusion, the whole you know uh, going mobile and bringing uh, a joy. Um, one of the people shout out to shout out oh, shout out Pat Game. Well, shout out to shout out Pat Gaming as well. But the Games of the Media, um, one of the, the the one of the founders of Games of the Media, he's. Uh, Grim the Dino, shout out to Grim the Dino. He still streams on Twitch and Kick. Um, check him out. Um, but what they do every year is they go. It's called uh, Mots, and they like basically game for this organization that basically puts together mobile. Uh, you guys remember in high school they put the TV on a little tray and then move it around to the different classrooms and you know. So basically, what they yeah, do. That's you know you was having a good day. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so um, he streams for fundraising every year uh, for um, this organization that basically puts those together 
um, like, you know, with the carts, with the TV and the video game systems on them and takes them into the hospitals and lets, you know, folks that are in like the ICU and kids that are, it's a children's hospital thing. So folks that are long term in the hospital, they could bring these gaming machines out and let them play the games. And that's how I that's found awesome. out. Um, that's how I found out about the whole adaptive controllers and what Microsoft was doing um, to make this possible for folks that were, um, you know, disabled. So um, I think it's a big thing. I think it's like one of the things that um, Graham and he'll tell you the story that he has a heart condition and he was in a hospital a lot. And um, video games is what got him through um, most of his trials and tribulations with being in the hospital all the time. And he wanted to do the fundraising for that so i mean a very understated thing currently and i think that you know being inclusive and and experience i mean we all game and we all love gaming and to be able to yeah. bring that to more people is huge um, yeah. and make them feel like they're part of everybody else yeah yep they can like said, inclusive yeah right very inclusive hey, hey crin dog hey hey that's big dog mm -hmm. yeah, man. salute to you man yeah, yeah, like, yeah, big. Um, and then Sensei John wanted to bring it back. You know what I'm saying? Trying to bring back the nostalgia, a place where people can gather. Like that's what I got from that. Come yeah. on, yeah. <laughs> you know, hey, you hey, know, come on, you know, you know, but you know, bringing back that nostalgia. Mm -hmm. You know that you know it's good family fun. Bringing the community together. You know, together. Um, and you know where we live. You know, we might be um, a little overstated with our crime and, and what's going on in our cities, um, you know, with the media and all that stuff. But there are still really great people in a really great community where we live that deserve things like that. You know what I'm saying? Like we're not, you know, uh, not everybody bips, you know, bips cars and robs people and all this other stuff, whatever. Um, you guys know what bipping is? Nah. Oh, man. Sensei, let's educate some uh, some East Coast cats. Let them know what bipping oh, is. Yeah. What's bipping? So these cats roll up on on the side of your car. You peek to see what's in it, right? If they like what they see, you bust your window and get the shit. That's it. It's called bipping. Hey, they'll, roll, just, they'll roll down the block. It, oh, dude, I just something. had someone peek in my, in my car's at a, in my driveway last week. Did you, uh, three o'clock in the morning. Did you pew pew them? Yep. Um, no, because I was still asleep, but I saw it on my cameras. Oh man, I ain't gonna, it's it's it's. I know you was mad as hell. Yeah, it gets so bad out here. Um, I ain't gonna lie to you. I pew pew them. I ain't gonna lie, man. And I was like, I was talking to the wife about it. I was like, you know, I probably couldn't do that because I'd have to pew pew them from my son's room. And I wouldn't want him to have to hear that. But what I would want to do is go get some barrel bombs or some M80s and just fire in the hole, light them up and just toss them out the window. So, Cause that is such a. See, and, and, and the way that the law states, um, Tennessee, Arkansas, right. Is we have the cash doctrine, right? So any of your property is considered your domicile or your castle. So the, the car is an extension of my castle. So I'm, and I live in a stand your ground state. I don't, I don't have to try to flee. I am not required by the law to try to flee. Oh, um, yeah. So, okay, and that's something we learn about a uh, Tennessee and Arkansas. It's an extension of their domicile. Yeah. Um, we could, we could never. No, we can. So, no. So, so yeah. So, bipping's a thing out here, and and what they basically do is they'll go down the block, like downtown Oakland, whatever, San Francisco, and all the cars where they know they're all tourist cars or rentals or whatever. They'll just go down each car, bop, 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 and just take whatever. And I mean, I think Derek Jeter came and visited us, and they bipped his car. You know, when he was out here. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, again, kind of going back to we're not all we don't we're not doing that. Um, and there's a bunch of great people and great communities that deserve something like what Sensei John said, you know, bringing something that brings some a good time, nostalgia, music, family togetherness. And um, I think, I think, in my opinion, everybody deserves to be able to be in a community that has something like that. Um, uh, finishing out my thought, I can't talk about my own thoughts. So what do you guys think about my thought? <laughs> I think you've got a really good track going on, you know, trying to trying to bring back the education system that that we've lost over the years, you know, um, 
but taking it a step further, but I think the integrating parents is a fantastic idea, you know? Yeah. Um, it, it, especially since, you know, you've got a lot of us, obviously sitting right here in this, in this recording, you've got four individuals of vastly different skill sets that could enlighten a community on with just four people alone. You know, you bring in all these other parents that can be like, Oh, I can do uh, underwater basket weaving and I can do it real good. That I can teach it well. He, you know what I mean? Like just how you being able to spread things that yeah, I'm just sitting here trying to find something, right? I'm like, for for me personally, for what I do, right? Not not many people think about what I do, you know, right. for, for work. You know, you all expect when you go turn on the faucet or the shower that the water's going to be there. Y'all, none of y'all really think about how it gets there, right. you know, or what it takes to make sure it's there. And yeah. using the equipment, I love educating people about it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm an excavator. <laughs> um, Calm down, Blippi. <laughs> but I, I mean, I love preaching to the younger kids that are coming up, getting ready to graduate high school. Hey, you don't have to go spend sixty, eighty thousand dollars on a college education just to have a good life. I mean, trade work. Right. You, you know, teaching you willing to put in again. the work. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I, I think it's a fantastic idea. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, and piggybacking off of his, you know, getting the parents involved, it's like, you know, obviously you're not running a daycare, so yeah, the more parents that get involved, the better. Right. And I, like I said, I think you hit it on the nail. You know, if, if let's kind of go deeper into this. If you were to teach something in a community center like this, what would you teach? Who wants to go first? I'll go, I'll say, I would teach, it would be IT related. Like, so, you know, some troubleshooting stuff for computers and also things to look out for like say you get a random email and it looks legit but the email itself looks like things to look out for to not Fishing. get scammed yes okay like yeah some it stuff all right Nyord, what would you teach if you know you could come into something like this and teach a, a group of young people what what skill would you bestow upon them you mean other than common sense Ah, yeah. <laughs> Good luck with that. Right, right. That's, uh, you mean just sense, because it's not common anymore, but. <laughs> um, there's actually a couple things. Um, I think, actually, I know the big one, and, and, and I'm going to go with the whole pew pew thing, because I am, I am a firearm enthusiast, okay? Um, I think there are a lot of people out there who even own firearms that haven't been properly trained on firearm safety themselves. Uh, and I don't think you're, I don't think there's really an aid for you're too young to start teaching firearm safety. safety. Um, I know there's a lot of people who have grandpa's old World War II revolver, you know, that it, it still works. <laughs> right. You know, right. it, to kind of put it, to kind of put it harsh. When I moved to Arkansas, about three, four months living where I'm living in Arkansas, about a half a block down from my house, a, a little baby, same age as my daughter, got a hold of daddy's gun and took her own life on accident. Okay? And, and, and that falls on the parents, right? But you can't teach an 18-month-old firearm safety. You really can't. But you can teach that parent how to properly store their firearms to where those kids can't get their hands on it right and that's that's definitely something that i that i want to teach whether it's using live firearms or if it's using fake ones i, I don't care firearm safety is something that i'm very passionate about oh okay sensei what you got if you were to you know teach or bestow a skill that you feel you're proficient at um to the to the younger generation what would it be no, we gonna go with the arts, <laughs> martial arts. Everybody was kung fu fighting. <laughs> yeah, <Ha! laughs> those that kicks were was fast, fast as, as lightning. lightning. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Who's the best. <laughs> Who's the best? Show enough. <laughs> you know. Okay. And that's definitely what I would teach. I would love to. 
you know, enlighten kids on the discipline. The it also includes common sense. It also includes uh, 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 physical part discipline. of it, of course, discipline, and and just um, also restraint and compassion too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Using, right. your, using that old noggin. I said using your noggin. I said. <laughs> and I, no, I was yeah. seriously sitting here as, as you were thinking, oh, Gordon, like, dude. As you were thinking what words you were going to use, I was sitting here thinking restraint, right? And then like your very next word out of your mouth was restraint. And I'm like, yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. I know. I hear you. You know what I'm saying? Um, it was like that old little quote or saying or phrase goes like, you know, nobody, nobody. Um, appreciates a warrior to the enemies at the gate you know what i'm saying that so it, it gets it gets really? overlooked a lot and you know like joe rogan has said or he was on the little pot on his little podcast not little podcast but on his podcast <laughs> but he was just talking he was talking to whoever and it was like you know the ones that know the sword but choose to sheath it are the ones that are going to take over the world and i think you know that comes with the whole thing too like you don't appreciate peace in, unless you know war you know and, um, you know, all these different things that, you know, I feel that um, this is going on in the world or whatever. We take a lot of stuff for granted because we don't know these different things like restraint and discipline and respect and common sense. And so, no, that's a, that's a great one, too. Man, I got I almost got kicked out of my discipline because uh, I, I my master's I, I got into a fight at school and, you know, my my black belt master was like, um, Tell me what happened, and and it can't. It, it ended up getting found out that I kind of went looking for the fight, you know. And and he's like, we, we we don't tolerate that here. I've got no problem with you defending yourself, but you don't start you don't start things. Period, you know. Right. And and that was kind of a an, an early eye opener for me. Right. All right. I mean, I think that's all I got for today's episode. Um, you know, we definitely got some time for some closing thoughts or anything like that. I mean, I enjoyed our discussion. Oh. We- we had a we had another question that was going to be brought forward. Yeah, I got one more thing. Oh, okay. It, well, it won't take long. It won't take long. No, well, it don't uh, we, we got some time too. I just you know, like I didn't have anything else to say. I mean, I'll just leave it up to you guys. What would you guys like to talk about? Okay. So, um, so it sounds like Crimson. Take it away. Yeah, I want to ask you guys who was your childhood hero, and I want to go last. Uh, and, and specify hero can be uh, what? It, it it could be fictional. It could be a real person. Either one, but just someone that you looked up to from your childhood. And the rule is only you can only pick one. Well, that's their rule. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can only pick one. I would like to definitely go second. And the reason why, because I just don't know what context you guys are going to take this. So um, if I got to pick one, it doesn't matter. I want to make sure that it's good. Um, I'm not going. And it don't have to be like your biggest hero, just someone or some. A childhood hero. Okay, Sensei looked well, like he got go he got first. One. Of course, my dad. Okay, he was in the military. Okay, for real, true. You know, I mean, I tell motherfuckers that my dad will blow your ass, your your whole house up. You know, what I mean? with a grenade. You know, what I mean? it was trying to pick on me and shit. You know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, but. Definitely my dad because he taught me uh, life lessons. Um, went to military events. Always thought that shit was so cool. Uh, taking me to the uh, military picnics. Hey, it's nothing like walking into a motor pool and the smell of a motor pool. Mm-hmm. Dude, my dad, you know, you smell all that grease and military shit. Mm-hmm. I don't know, just like I don't know the gasoline just, fumes, <laughs> that diesel shit, man. <laughs> yeah, diesel. Right. Oh, my bad. My diesel. bad. Diesel. Diesel. Okay, that's right. what it is. So, okay, definitely. I'd have to say it's my dad. I mean, of course, I love Michael Jordan and all them motherfuckers. You know them. The, you know, but my dad, like, like. He had cars and shit. He had to be old school Beamer, old school like Beetle, uh, old school Ram truck. You know, you it. I mean, mm. I feel like we're getting ready to shout out Toyota again. 
Hey, of course, though, I'm older, like, he gets on my nerves a little bit, you know? <laughs> I love you, Pops, but, you know, you get on my fucking nerves. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, New York, do you want to take it? I thought you were going second. Nah, I just, yeah. just no, nah, nah, I'm going to go third. You already <laughs> placed uh, it on, on song. I know, you, you on said it. Recording. <laughs> okay. Um, Man, you know, following that, I you know, uh, again, a f- childhood hero. Um, and I gotta go fictional. I mean, I'm a Batman fan. You know, okay. so Batman was my. I mean, DC Comics, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, over MCU, under over Marvel. Batman was, you know, who I loved um, growing up. I mean, yeah, I mean, I got all sorts of Batman paraphernalia and stuff like that. Um, so I'd say Batman. I mean, I, and my whole thing was, you know, he, uh, was the only person that was a human, didn't have superpowers. He used his brain, you know what I'm saying? Yes, he had tech and unlimited funds to do all that other stuff, but, you know, he was the one that discipline is what got him to the level that he was at. And, you know, they were straight. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, he, the, so growing up, I was a big Batman fan. Um, and I'd say that's one of my childhood heroes. So yeah, I felt kind of bad saying it because, you know, Sensei is like, oh, my dad. I'm like, ah, uh, I, I, I'm not, I mean, <laughs> you know, and, it's okay. It's okay. Just, and just, they're both right answers. Uh, I've got a, I've got a plan for after all of us answer. So it's okay. all good. Okay. So uh, I'm, I'm, D- I'm DC like you, dog. Okay. Yeah. That's a beautiful thing. Um, hey, on my keys, a word, I got a Superman symbol. Okay. Uh, and and you know to kind of touch on my dad, I didn't appreciate to my my dad until I was over eighteen, and you know there's a story behind that we could go over that on another day. Uh, but uh, you know you know love you pops. <laughs> All right, my turn, right? Yes, it's your turn. Okay, um, the I'm gonna go fictional as well, and um, fortunately for Sean and I, oh, we are both DC fans, oh, hardcore DC they, fans. There we go. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> the crawl <crawdy> DC um, dude. <laughs> but uh, I was the Flash. Hmm. But nice. I love the Flash. You know, growing up being an ADHD kid, right? Like, hey, dude, hey. my my mind's racing like the Flash can run. Okay, so <laughs> that's 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 where I was at. Plus, you know, all the witty com comebacks and and all that jazz. I like the way he got his start, right? Because it the way. At least in the comics and, and the WD adaptation, right? Which is the best um, one by far. Which, yeah, dude, the movie sucks. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I can't believe that they picked him to play the Flash. But um, the way he got his powers seems like it could be legit. <laughs> you know what I mean? It wasn't like some weird sci fi thing. It was just a scientific experiment mixed with the perfect mixture of weather and there you go you know um but yeah i'm gonna go with the flash all right nice currently what you got you said you're gonna go last that means you got something big for us what you got yes yeah, so i actually have two but Mm-mm. i'm not gonna go well hold on hold on hold on <laughs> i'm not gonna i'm not gonna sit here and explain the like the differences like i, I got two no, for pretty much a one. similar reason for for a similar reason and that is so Gohan from Dragon Ball Z and Michelangelo from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, both of them because like the respect they had for their father, both of them, and like and when you watch the cartoons, like you see it, and when and that's all the turtles really, but Michelangelo is my favorite. But like the Ninja Turtles had so much respect for their father, Splinter. And Gohan was exactly the same way. Like they knew where they came from and they lived it. And okay, so those those were my biggest heroes when I was a child. All right, you re- you all ready for my follow up? Yeah, let's go with the follow up. What you got? <laughs> all right, we're all gonna answer this question again, but you're gonna flip whatever genre you took. So if you chose a fictional person, you got to choose a, a real person. If you chose a real person, you got to choose a fictional person. And there's no repeating of what other people have already said. Okay, now we got to go in, in reverse order. So currently has to go first. Okay. I'll go with my grandfather, my father's father. Okay. Uh, quick reason why. I mean, he was just 
a respectable man. I, like, I loved the hell out of him, and I spent a lot of time with him as a child, and I was their only grandson, so I got treated special. So there was that, too. Um, I, I mean, he was in the Korean War. Like, so he was in the military and a lot to respect, in, in my opinion. All right. Yeah. New York, what you got? Um, mine's going to be my mom. Um, you know, growing up, she was a single mom for a while, right? And then she was like the epitome of teaching me work ethic, um, consequences, you know, all, all that stuff. My mom was a disciplinarian. She was the nurturer. She was... All the above, you know. She's she's the reason why I turned away. I uh, turned out the way I have. So, okay. Um, Sean, I don't know if I'm ready for the answer to this question. I really got to think about it. Um, and it's not as cool. I mean, it's not it's not a family. You know what? I grew up watching a lot of TV. Um, so there's so many different like real people that you know that I probably could look up to. And, you know, the first person, and don't laugh at this because, you know, um, but like Eric Estrada, you know, Poncho from Chips, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, if the first thing that popped in my head was that, like, you know, I remember watching Chips and thinking that mm -hmm. was so cool. I wanted to be a cop. You know, I think that me and then um, so, you know, yeah, that's Eric Estrada, right? That's Ponch, right? That's his real name. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. So the character that he played. um, you know, again, a, a real person, and again, I grew up, you know, I was a latchkey kid, so, you know, I came home from school, my dad didn't get home till like 7 o'clock at night, you know, don't open the door for nobody, you know, my sister basically raised us, stuff like that, um, but if you're like, you know, idol, somebody looked up, I could lie to you, I think, um, you know, watching like Chips really kind of, oh, I'd like to be a cop, that's cool, they're riding on motorcycles, and I mean, I remember that from like you know i was like five years old or something like that and it still sticks with me you know 30 plus years later 35 plus years later um so and then you meet chp and you're like man forget them guys <laughs> <laughs> right so actually there's somebody who met eric estrada who a guy i used to work with well, i mean it's been probably 14 years ago since i worked with him now but okay yeah he eric estrada was actually somewhere local okay and and he was he went to meet him. He was talking about it at work. It was cool. Okay. What what you got, Sensei? You gotta go fictional. Yeah, I know. I'm the only real one in here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Man's got jokes. I know. <laughs> anyway, anyway, um I have to go with Lost your audio. Pick a group? Or was huh? that me? Is that me? We can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Power Rangers. Huh. Which, well, which one? Specific one? Okay. Big one. Tommy, for sure. The Green Ranger. Yeah, you can't go wrong with that. You can't go wrong with Tommy. You know, I know he had a candle that was going to run out and that was going to kill him, you know, but <laughs> he made up for some shit. But he was like the ultimate, like... Ranger, right? Like, yeah, I, I can't. All the great gigs. I, I can't. You know, I cannot he, dispute that. Yeah. And he had the dopest. Like everybody was like, "Oh, Zord!" You know, he was like, "Dun, dun, 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 dun. You know, I mean, come on, man. Yeah. I, 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 I just. I like the White Ranger better because he had. That's what I was gonna say. You know what I'm saying? He <laughs> rode. He rode, a, he rode on a lion. You know what I'm saying? I. I. Uh, but it's, it's still Tommy. It was White Ranger. Yeah, it's still, it's still Tommy. Tommy though. Yeah, you right. That's where he came from though. Right. Right. I, I can agree with that. With Tommy. Right. I ain't gonna lie. All and that the sword flew. Flew. Yeah, that sword. Yeah, that. And you got the. Dun, dun, oh man, that's great. Yeah, that's yeah. Hey, hey, hey and, then, and then when he wanted to change some shit, it was. Dun, 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 dun. I was like, oh, I see. <laughs> you right. He, okay. Man, that was a show. That was a show I was only allowed to watch when I was at my dad's house. Oh, was, okay. was it too violent for mom? <laughs> Mom didn't like me watching it, so every summer is when I got to watch it. <laughs> oh man, yeah, the Power Rangers, hey, man. Power Rangers with my shit. Hey, uh, I don't know, if you or you might not know about this, but Sean, do you remember the VR Troopers? Oh hell yeah, 
We are the art right. troopers. There, there was like a whole virtual reality. <laughs> there was a whole like strew of those, like even like the big bad Beetleborgs and uh, oh, new Beetleborgs. I remember them. Yeah, yeah, the big bad Beetleborgs, uh, VR troopers, and of course all the Power Rangers. Um, yeah. yeah, shoot. I mean, I you know what Pops would say. Okay, if you look so, at it and be like, Pops would be like, I ain't nothing but Voltron. Oh yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Like, what were you gonna say? How many of you all who were Power Ranger fans went and rushed and saw the new adaptation of the movie? I waited until it till it came out. the The new one, the new movie that came out. With. Yeah, I waited till it's it. New Power Rangers movie. What are you talking about? Like five, six years ago? Yeah, that came out right. Okay. Within the last five, uh, six years. Okay. Maybe maybe I haven't maybe I haven't seen it. Uh, you have to. It was it was I waited, but I didn't watch it. It wasn't I think they did it justice. Yeah, it wasn't bad. I I like okay. I waited till it streamed, but um but I definitely okay, enjoyed okay. it. Maybe I've seen it and I just gotta, you know but I'm gonna go check that out, Nior, thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. They, they, yeah, they paid homage. Right. Don't get me wrong. Right. Yeah, that yeah. first movie they made with the little ooze. With the little, Dude, that was so, badass. I loved it. I, I, yeah, I, I watched that movie so many. And that's when it became Ninja Rangers and all that stuff too. Oh, that thing. Was yeah, awesome. they yeah. had to find the ninja powers <laughs> yeah. before they became Rangers. Right. Oh yeah. That was and a then thing. Power Rangers Turbo. I remember that too. Yeah, that's when they started. That's when they started losing me though. I. I they had the little kid. I, I just watched the original. Yeah, like I said, I I kind of follow them like the, when they start going to space and Dino Rangers or Dino Thunder. Yeah, I kind of lost me yeah. from there. But I mean, it, you know, like I said, they got to keep it going with the new generation, and that just wasn't my generation at that point. Right. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. yeah. All, All right. right. So that was a good one. Thank uh, you, yeah. Crilly. Oh yeah, a beautiful one. Okay, so I mean, I'm I'm thinking we're we're ready to wrap up our our uh, episode seven title pending. Uh, <laughs> do we got any last minute shout outs or anything like that anybody wants to end the show with before we get into our socials yeah what is our what is our potential topics for next week mm. oh, we're just gonna leave that in the air yeah we're gonna we hey, you know why because we want y'all to come tune in and find out what we're talking about yeah <laughs> you know what that's code for we don't have uh, the slightest clue <laughs> uh, whatever it is i think we got to get deep because we had our light airy one this week you know we can go back deep next week okay well that works for me okay um currently you got anything um i don't think so i just put out a blog and so i don't want to say i've had at least one person say that they've watched one of our episodes but then they couldn't find the rest of them so if you go to my blog which you should be able to find in the Shadow Pack West stuff. Um, I have a link there to the playlist of all the Dad's Life podcast episodes. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Sensei. Thank you, Crinley. Oh, well, what's the blog about, Crinley? You kind of piqued our interest here. Oh, you got to read it to, to find out. <laughs> oh, damn. <Gosh. laughs> <laughs> you can do that to us. <laughs> Okay. Well, I got to do it to the people watching the video. We can talk about it after. <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, Sensei, you got any last minute shout outs uh, before we end our episode today? Mm. Uh, shout out to you, Crinley. I didn't even know you had a blog, so uh, let's check this out. What? I don't. I don't put it out enough, but I, I, I need to do it more. Man, Crinley oh, used to be the. Crinley used to was the lead blog editor for Shadowpad Gaming for a while. I yes, he was. I think I did like I think it, it was, was six, and then Crinley took over. Yep. Yeah, yeah, Crinley, we need that. I definitely need yeah, that Crinley. information so I could put it on all my socials and everything. Crinley became my blog manager. Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, so it does good work over there. Um, and me, I, you know, again, just a shout out to the patrons again. Uh, obviously, shout out to everybody that's watching, spending the time with us uh, for the week. Again, we did talk about some stuff that, um, you know, I hope the patrons are uh, appreciative about some behind the scenes stuff, about what it takes to keep this stuff going. I did talk about, you know, teaching. And, um, you know, with that, um, 
you know, what does it take? Because it's not as easy as everybody thinks it is. There's a lot of hard work that we put in during the week prior to us getting to our recordings uh, to put the content out for you. And there's a lot of good content. And then we talk about that stuff in our bus uh, before the episode or bus before the show's recordings that we have on Patreon. Uh, Patreon. So if you're interested in that kind of content, go ahead and uh, head over to shadowpackwest.com. There's a link there that'll take you to our Patreon page. You can start your Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. Um, again, we appreciate everybody that is um, interacting and, and listening to us. But again, you want a little extra content, you can get it that way. Um, shout out to Shadow Pack West. Again, a content creating community where it allows us to continue to work together and do this. Um, you know, we create for creation's sake. Uh, head over to the website to check out all the different projects we're working with and all the different people that are involved in our community. And if you want any more information about it or information about us, if uh, anybody has these questions, comments, or emotional outbursts for Njord, where can they find you, Njord? Uh, first and foremost, in the comments here, y'all, like, drop us your information, what, what you guys want to hear, topics you'd like us to discuss. But if you're wanting to get directly in contact with me, find me over on Twitter or X at Njord God. That's N J O R D G O D. Okay. And currently, if they got any questions, comments, or emotional outbursts for you, where can they find you? Uh, Twitter, um, at Mr. Crinley, I believe. Um, <laughs> there, or on my Discord channel, which the link to that should be down in the description. Yeah, and it will be. Uh, Sensei, anybody got any questions, comments, or emotional outbursts uh, for you? Where can they find you? You know what? I gotta fix my, um, Discord, but, uh, if you wanna find me, you can find me at Sensei underscore John 33. That's S E N S E I underscore John 33. What? I got it right? Yes, you did. Hold on. Give me, you get the horns for that. (laughs) 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 It's taken seven episodes, but he's gotten it. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, that's where you can find me at, though. Uh, That's X and Twitter. Okay. Uh, Excuse me. Uh, see, I got something wrong. There you go. That's X and Instagram. Okay, X and Instagram. Okay. Um, it's before, going to be this more coming soon. Uh, right. Uh, and before I talk about uh, where you can find me, if you have any questions, comments, or emotional outbursts, I would like to point out, or actually, I would like the viewers to point out something different in Sensei John's background. Um, compare. I feel uh, <laughs> so, so you'd have to go back from compare from this episode compared to the last episode and we'll talk about that because we haven't talked about that just yet i just noticed it uh, we'll talk about this after recording again i would like to hear what you guys see something different from last episode to this episode in sensei john's background leave a comment down in the section uh comment section down below um but last but not least you can find me on um, x and you can also find me on instagram and almost every major uh platform but just look up sean flack 2.0 um youtube it's sean flack 2.0 instagram sean flack or sean underscore flack 2.0 and then of course the major thing is is on x uh, you find me on x is at sean flack just as it is right there um and with that um you want to say thank you to everybody for listening to this week's episode and we hope that you guys tune in to the next dad life episode next week for your dad life dad 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 advice advice. advice. (laughs) We're going to get it. (laughs) Peace out, fellas. Or fellas and viewers. (laughs) Later.